Okay, this is going to be about the wooden box. It's just a basic box with a hinge. Uh, you can put whatever you want in there. It's perfect for pencils or jewelry, whatever you want to put in there. Little knickknacks. Um, this one has the uh, Cheshire Cat on the uh, top of it there. We did that with the laser engraver. Um, or you can do just like a, a name. This one says Maddie on there. And, uh, you know, just random stuff in there. Um, as you can see, you can put different colors of stain. This is the normal color of the wood on this one right here. So it opens up and closes. Nice and neat. Um, it's a good basic, uh, just first wood project for um, eighth graders. And uh, I'll show you how I make that. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is rip this board into into three strips. Um, I'm going to make it each strip three and a half wide. The reason I chose that dimension is because it leaves the least amount of scrap. So most of the dimensions are determined by the 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 wood or the machine that I'm working on. Alright, this next machine is called a planer. What it does is uh, you feed the wood into here and the, there's blades up on top in the top half of the machine and the blades are basically shaving off the top of the wood. Um, right now, this wood that I have, um, one side is really rough and the other side is smooth. It's, uh, it's already been planed on one side, so it makes it really nice and smooth. So we need to plane the uh, other side down so it's, it's nice on both sides. Plus the wood is really thick for a box this small. So I'm going to take it down. Right now it's like a little bit more than three quarters. So we're going to take it down until it's about like 0.6 inches. Um, and uh, that'll work perfectly for the box. So just so you know how it works. Um, Here's all the on off buttons and stuff. This is the stop. You push it in to stop it, but in order to turn it back on, you have to turn it so you can see a little yellow stripe. This is the on off switch here. This will raise and lower the table, and this will turn on the machine. This will raise the table, but really slow. All right, so I'm going to run it through twice. I'm going to do one at 70 and then I'll do one at 60 and slowly make it smaller. Okay, after they've gone through, um, Move it up to 60, flip the wood over, and then send it through again. All right, the next step is to cut these into the walls. So we have long pieces and short pieces. So we've got to cut two longs and two shorts and then we'll, we'll glue them into a, a frame for the, the walls. Um, the dimensions of the, the box again, determined by the machines. The, the long piece, that's because this dimension here is that how much I can fit on my belt sander and this one is determined by the the wood if I were to cut that same the same piece of wood in half it would you know constrain this dimension here so that's how we came up with the uh, the size of the box just to eliminate scrap and you know wasted wood so you can see here so far 
I only have this small small piece of scrap so far. Okay, make sure before you start cutting the wood that you check for cracks. They're usually on the ends of the wood. Um, so if there's a crack on one side of the wood, most likely the other side is clean because somebody's already cut that off. And then we can use this to hold on to while we're cutting other pieces onto. So um, use the end of the wood that doesn't have any cracks in it. If both ends have cracks, then cut off until the crack disappears and then start cutting your pieces. Alright, this is a sliding miter saw. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to have it slide forward, come all the way down, make sure it stays down as far as it'll go, and then push forward until it comes all the way back. Okay? So um, <clears throat> When you're cutting, make sure you don't let it lift up as you're cutting the wood because then it won't cut all the way through. Alright, so all the way down and then come forward. Okay, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cut a little piece off the end just to show you how that works. And up on the, the handle here, there's a button on the top and then a trigger. Both of those have to be pressed before it'll turn on. It's kind of a safety feature there. Alright, so use your thumb and push the button on the top and then pull the trigger. You, you know, pull the trigger when it's all the way up and then come down. And then lift it up after it's done. Make sure you, you let, let go before you lift up. So, pull the trigger, come down, push forward, let go, then come up. Okay, you want to do it in that order. Alright, so let me come in closer now. <clears throat> now I've put a piece of tape here to mark where the, the uh, shorter piece is. Okay, so just bring the wood up till it just barely is touching the tape and then make a cut. So bring it forward, turn it on, and then cut. Okay, then you want to do that same thing again. So I got two short ones. Now the long piece, um, I don't have a mark for that, but basically it works out perfectly that it's that lines up flush with the end of the fence here. So if you just bring it up till it's even there, you can use your finger to, to gauge it right at the top of the piece of wood here. Okay, just try to make them the, the, as much the same as you can. If you're a little bit off, um, it's okay, but get it as perfect as you can. And then just do the same thing again. All right, you can see a little knot here. That's not going to hurt it, um, so it's okay. All right, so I got my four pieces. All right, this next tool is called a router, and it's in a router table. Basically, a router just takes a, a bit and spins it really fast. Um, this is an example of a router bit. This is what we'll use later to do a, a decorative uh, profile around the uh, top edge. Um, there's lots of other ones out there that you can use. Um, what's in here right now is basically a straight bit. What it's going to do is basically just carve out a little step. Okay, and this is what they call a rabbit when you cut out a step at the end of a board. If they do it in the middle of a board, a little groove, it would be called a, a dado. So. That's a rabbit, and then one in the middle would be called a dado. We're not going to use that, but just for information. Also, another thing, I didn't say how long these pieces were. This one's four and a half, and uh, the other one is roughly uh, nine and three-fourths. Okay? But, you know, you can design a box, and, you know, any dimensions will work, but for the class that I'm teaching, those are 
the dimensions that all the boxes end up being. Um, all right, you only want to do this to the long pieces. So the short pieces, you don't do any of this to. Okay, so don't even bring them to this machine. Um, well, you can, but just make sure you don't use them. So long pieces only, so just these two. And we're going to do each end. Okay? Now the end, the, the, the side that you put down is going to be the side that's on the inside of your box. So if you see a really cool grain pattern that you want to be on the outside of the box, then have that up so you can see it. Okay, so what you want to have on the outside of your box, just have it up. So if you're like, oh, I like this side better, then make sure you can see it when you're doing this. Okay, now inside, here's where the actual router is. This is it right here. The on-off button is this right here. You just push down to turn it on and then up to turn it off. So um, this up here, this that goes back and forth, that is what we call a miter gauge and it's going to help you push the wood across and keep it perfectly um, at a you know, 90 degree with the table and uh, then I have this plastic guard right here, it's a clear plastic piece here that will protect your fingers so this should be uh, a really safe machine, you'd actually have to really try to get your fingers in there please don't all right, so let's get a better angle and I'll show you that process in action. Um, a couple things you want to make sure you're doing. Number one, make sure you're pushing down on the wood because sometimes it'll, it'll lift up. So push down on the wood and also push it in against the fence so that it's making you know, the complete step and not getting pushed away by the, the bit or lift it up by the bit. All right, also make sure the dust collector is on for this so it'll pull all the chips out you know, with a vacuum and then it should all be perfect. Another thing as you're doing this, make sure you flip the board around like this. Don't flip the board over this way because that'll put the step on the wrong side. Keep the same side up always. If you flip it over the wrong way, then you have to start over. All right, next is gluing it all together. Um, I have this piece of rubber here so we don't get too much glue on the table. I have other tables that are covered in just blue um, plastic that uh, I don't care if they get glue on them. I don't want too much glue getting on the wooden tables though. It just makes things messy. So just put a strip of glue in each of those steps. Each rabbit gets glue. Okay, and then um, you can just spread the glue everywhere. Get it all over the place and both both surfaces. Just do that to all of them. Okay, now that we got the glue on there, we can assemble it. And again, look at the grain of the wood. Make sure you got what you want on the outside on the outside if you are picky at all about that. So we'll just put those together. Open this up. Okay, if we get it pushed together a little bit first, it'll hold together fairly well while we're moving it over into the clamp. Now, I like to lift it up a little bit so it's half in, half out. We'll clamp it in there really good. 
And uh, this next step is if if we need to take these out and put them in a locker, usually we, you know, we're getting towards the end of class and and we don't want to leave these in here because the next class needs to use the vices. So we need to take them out and in order to hold them together so that the you know the glue can dry while it's being still held tight. I have these, basically it looks like a giant rubber band, but basically all it is is a inner tube tire uh, cut up into strips. So it's just, you know, inner tubes. Basically, so what you want to do is stretch it out really tight, put it on that side, and then bring it over and stretch it out again, and then put it on there and just let it go. Take everything out, flip it over, put it back in, Get it in there, do the same thing again. Okay. Now, you want to look down inside and make sure uh, the gaps are closed up all the way. Pound on it till it's all together. Squeeze it really good. Okay, you should see glue oozing out in the, in all the corners. Nice tight fit. Okay, if not, then maybe you need to push a little bit more. Okay, now at this stage, it's kind of hard to tell whose is whose. So write your name right here on the top. That will get covered up with the lid anyway, so don't worry about it. Or it will get sanded off later. So just write your name right here or on the inside because you can later cover that up with felt. But make sure your name is on it. Another thing to, to watch out for is make sure that you don't have too much of a step right here. Okay, That can also be fixed. This one I know will fit in the clamp. Just close it like that and that will close everything down if you do that before the glue gets too dry. Okay? So just close that in there and it'll flatten everything out and then you can put it in your locker to dry. All right. <clears throat> You're not going to be able to get this whole surface perfectly flat. Um, so in order to fix that, you need to, to sand it there's two ways. There's the old-fashioned way, which is just getting one of these boards that has sandpaper on it and just putting it down and sanding it back and forth. Or you can go to the belt sander. Okay, This, this way, I think, is uh, probably a little bit more precise. You can get it really fine-tuned and it leaves a better finish. But um, either way will work. I'll show both. Okay, you want to wait for the glue to dry. At least 15 minutes before you do this. Okay. okay. And you want, just want to keep going till you don't see any more steps. All right. Now this would, obviously is going to take a while, so I'm not going to show all of it. But I'll, I'll show the uh, the belt sander, which is much faster. But if you're not careful, you can sand your project to oblivion. As you can see, the project barely fits on the sander. You know, it's just just a little bit left there before it runs out of room. Um, so that's kind of what determined the the length of the box there. Uh, the on-off switch is down below, right there. And uh, again, make sure the uh, dust collector is on when you're doing this. It makes a big dust cloud otherwise. Um, Basically all you want to do is come straight in, okay, well, it would be dry. I'd say don't have these on for this part. Take these off. That way it's sitting directly on there. Um, another good thing to check is if this is square, get one of these try squares. Make sure the machine is set up perfectly square. If it's at an angle, uh, it won't look good later. So just double check that. Um, 
and everything should be good. So as you're coming in, make sure you're coming straight in and straight out. Don't curve it or lift it up like this. If you lift it up like this and out, if that top, if the top corner gets caught by the belt, it's going to chuck it downwards. And what usually happens is as it's coming down, the bottom corner gets trapped in there and it just jams the machine and sometimes it'll break the sanding belt. So straight in, straight out. Make sure your fingers are out here. Don't be like this and come in and sand off your fingers. That won't feel good. So keep your fingers out as far as you can. Sand it. Then as you're turning the box, make sure you're way out far and away when you turn it. You know, there's always that chance that you know, you're trying to be fast, you turn and you accidentally get your hand. So be careful coming in and out that you don't you know, sand your fingers and on the turn that you don't sand your fingers. So if you're doing both sides, like that. Keep checking it and making sure that you've gotten rid of any steps. If you feel anything, just keep going. If you notice it more on one corner than any of the others, then put a little bit more pressure on the back side. Again, just do a little bit at a time until you know for sure that everything is good. Then flip it over and do the other side. Everything is good. Feels nice. I'm ready for the lids, the top and the bottom. All right, for the top and the bottom, I'll just take this piece of wood here and I'll cut it in half. That'll give me two five and a half pieces. This is about five inches wide now because you know we added a little bit of wood here and here. This was four and a half, but then when we add those, now it's five. So five and a half, so when we glue it on, we have a little bit of uh, wiggle room that we'll trim off later. And uh, that'll make everything easy to do. So again, five and a half, and uh, uh, that basically will cut this pretty much right down the middle. And then I will plane this one down just enough to get rid of the you know, the ugliness of it, you know, the rough edges. So I want to keep this one as thick as I can, but still look good. I'm not going to show the planing um, and the cutting, but just so you know what I'm doing, because um, the students don't do this, uh, I do it. I'm not going to spend too much time showing it. It's pretty much a piece of cake, so cut it pretty much straight down the middle and uh, plane it down till it looks good. All right, here's one of those pieces. Notice that there's a big knot right here on the corner. I wouldn't leave that there. I would cut that off. A knot in the middle is okay, but a knot on the edge can fall out when it's when you're machining on it and stuff. So, you know, stay away from knots on the edge. So again, you're just going to pull it all the way out, turn it on, come down and push through. not when at an angle I might need to cut a little bit more make sure that when you're cutting that the wood is all the way against the fence if it's not all the way against the fence the blade will catch it and throw it 
So make sure it's already as far back as it'll go. All right, now, um, basically what we're trying to do is making, we're gonna make this slightly bigger, so we'll glue it on and then trim it down to fit the rest of the box, rather than trying to make it perfect. So to make, you know, the box is flush with the fence like that, so again, we're trying to make it bigger, so just go one inch past the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. You know, just guess about an inch. You do a finger's width, okay? Um, that'll be about a, about enough. And then make two two pieces that size. Now I got two pieces. Okay, now we have some more gluing. So um, when you're gluing on the the top and the bottom, you know again look at the the wood, see which side looks the best, and put that side so you can see it. Um, put plenty of glue on there. You want to make sure that it's everywhere. So spread it out. All right, so that's on there. And then I'll place this on top. Push down a little bit. It's going to want to scoot around, so get it down and we'll flip it over. And you can place it a little bit more precise. Okay, then put glue on the other side. And then spread the glue out. All right, another reason why I have the uh, the square here so you can wipe glue on it and I won't care. Alright, um, put the other one on, check for what side you like the best, and stick it on. Alright. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in like this. I'll close it up. Wasn't really good. You want to see glue oozing out everywhere. Now that's only clamping the bottom half. To get the top half, you want to use one of these wooden clamps. It's called a parallel clamp. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the tips until everything's good. Now I'm going to close it so it's closed back here. Now I still got a gap up here so now I'm going to open up the back of the jaws. You can't really see that so I'll move it up. So I've I closed right here, I closed this one using this one, the front handle to hits the box and then I'm going to open up those so that the tips come in. So I'm basically opening the back which closes the front until you see glue oozing out. You want to close up all the gaps, you don't want any gaps visible. Alright, so once that's done, then you're ready to go. Again, write your name on it, right here, because this is going to get trimmed off later, so it's not going to be permanent, but write it in Sharpie or whatever. So just write your whole name right there on the edge, and uh, this one you'd have to leave in the clamp 
Um, if another student needs it, I'll take it out and I'll put it somewhere else in the shop and your name being on there uh, will help you find it the next time.